The hills are alive. Oh, excuse me. In this video, we're going to take a look at sound waves, uh, waveforms, complex sounds, wave interference, Fourier analysis, all these things you may have read about and may be a little confused about. What I have here is a really cool way to visualize sound waves in real time. So in this upper window, you can see the actual sound wave, the actual pressure variations that are taking place. So if I were to make a pure tone, the best way for me to do that is to whistle. You should see a, a single sine wave of, of one frequency. Take a look. That was pretty good. Now in the bottom window, what we have is the sort of frequency spectrum of the sound wave. And you can see as I talk, it's bouncing all over the place because to make all the sounds I'm making, I'm making all kinds of different frequencies. But when I make that pure tone, you'll notice that one frequency in particular rises to the top. Take a look. You see it there, the really tall one. In fact, if I whistle and make it higher and lower, you'll see that peak move. Watch this. Okay, pretty cool. So those are pure tones, right? Now if I make a complex tone, like let's just say I sing a same note, it's going to take more than just one frequency to make that complex tone. So let me sing a note. La. And you see there's like 15 frequencies that are all involved there. Take a look at the waveform at the top first and then take a look at the frequencies involved. You'll see that to get a complex waveform, you need lots of different frequencies all working together. La. Now here's the amazing thing, all right? I have a little guitar here I'm gonna play while I share this with you. The amazing thing about what we're seeing here as you look at the frequency spectrum below is that if I play a complex tone, like a guitar, The amazing thing is that you see it's only like 10 peaks in that spectrum. Each of those peaks represents a pure tone. What that means is that to make this sound on a guitar, all you have to do is combine 10 pure tones. That is, you could get 10 people all whistling exactly the right frequency, a pure tone, and by combining those pure tones together, you get something that sounds exactly, in fact, indistinguishable from a guitar. So that sound, which, which you would hear and you'd say, oh, that sounds kind of like a guitar, or maybe it's a sound that sounds like a violin. All it is, is what combination of pure sine waves do you use to get that kind of complex wave? It's really kind of amazing. Now, by contrast, if you were to put in a ton of frequencies, like I am when I'm talking, let's just say you put in all the frequencies at once. Well, it would sound like this. I mean, that is to say, like, what if we just, every single frequency on this entire spectrum, we turned up the knob, all right? Well, this is what it would sound like. It would sound like this. All right, it would be static. It would be white noise. In fact, that's why we call it white noise. Just like white light is all the frequencies of light, white sound or white noise is all the frequencies of sound playing at the same time. It's really astounding, right? Because you look at it as I talk here, right? It looks like white noise on the spectrum. The, 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 what would you say? Like the, the difference between noise and human speech is really just astounding how much information is being communicated and how quickly it's being communicated and how it all boils down to these frequencies that are constantly changing. Oh, it's, it's astounding. But let's step back because we want to understand the basic physics here that's going on. And I want to illustrate that for you um, through this concept of interference. Okay, so you read a little bit about interference, uh, and, and I want to illustrate it for you in a more visual way. Check it out. So here I can send a little pulse wave down, down this string. All right, send a pulse. Here's another pulse. Waves have this unusual property that they can interfere with each other. And when they interfere, they can still pass right through each other. Like they don't, they don't like um, destroy each other or bounce off each other. But while they're interfering, they add together. Right, and this is the heart 
of this whole idea of these complex waveforms because it's all these pure tones adding together that creates a complex tone. So check out this wave interference, right? If I send a pulse down here and I let it bounce back, it's a wave so it reflects off of a boundary. And if I were to send another pulse at just the right time, I could get these two pulses to interfere with each other. Here you go. Boom. There, they interfered a little bit. I'm going to throw another one. Boom. I'm going to throw another one. Hi-ya. And you see the pulse is getting bigger and bigger. Hi-ya. So this is an illustration of, of constructive interference, right? I can build an enormous pulse by adding several pulses together. Now, by contrast, I could um, do destructive interference. What if I sent a pulse right there? Boom. They're passed right by each other. But while they're passing, look, at that moment, they actually like annihilate one another. It doesn't mean they disappear, right? But there is destructive interference. Now, this can happen with wave pulses, but it can also happen with wave oscillations, like, like sound waves. So the way that uh, uh, we would illustrate that um, is what we call Fourier analysis, which is really very sophisticated. I, I mean, physicists hardly learn about this until they get to grad school, all right? So don't feel bad if it's confusing, but what's cool, it's one of the coolest things, so check it out. Here, at the top, we have basically, this is what we've already seen, but shown a totally different way, all right? So this, at the top, is like a spectrum, okay? And it's like just like a cartoon version of a spectrum. And then down here at the bottom, we have the wave form, the actual sound wave, you could say. So right now it is a single, this is like when I was whistling a note, a single frequency. And the wave form, you know, if I were to zoom out, it looked kind of like this, right? It was like a wave going back and forth. Now, if I were to be able to have two whistlers, two pure tones at the exact same time, but they have different frequencies, then the spectrum would look kind of like this. Right? Two, two different frequencies. Because of interference, here's one wave in red down right here, the other one in yellow. Those two waves add together through constructive interference and destructive interference. And this is the sum of the two that you get. And notice this looks totally different. Now I can add another one here. Right? And I could keep adding these frequencies. Maybe some go this way, some go the other way. And you can build a waveform of any shape you want. Look at this. You could build a square wave. You can use a series of sine waves added together just the right way that you make a wave that looks like a square. Or one that looks like a triangle. Or one that looks like a sawtooth. Or one that looks like a guitar or a violin. Or one that looks like Tom Hanks talking. Or one that looks like, you know, sounds like an opera singer. The point is you can make any sound by adding together these pure tones. Okay, now I've turned the sound on so you can actually hear this. I want to show you how these different waveforms sound very different. How by adding more and more pure tones, you can create a richer, more complex sound. So here's the pure tone. Now let's listen to a triangle wave of the same musical note. All right, and now here's the square wave. See how the tone is different? Sawtooth? Oh, that sounds like an organ or something. All right? So you can see how the sound, the character, we call it the timbre of the sound, is changing as you add all these different uh, waveforms to it. Now, there's one last cool piece of this that I want to show you. And that is, once you understand this, you can build synthesizers. All right? So if you have a keyboard, musical keyboard, that plays just pure notes, it doesn't sound very good, right? This is what we've seen, a pure wave and a single frequency. You can make it be square waves, and now you sound like a video game music, you know, it's like Mario playing here. But the really cool thing is you can make it sound like a violin. So here you have a complex waveform, and, and it has these specific frequencies, which make it sound just like a violin or a piano. It's so cool, right? How we can get all the different sounds. What we're going to see over time in this course is how we can get all the different sounds that make up our speech with this basic concept, with these pure tones. Now, the last thing I want to show you is a preview of something we're going to learn about in chapter two, but I can illustrate it here with this cool um, program that we started with. So we have our frequency spectrum down below. And one of the things we can do to sounds is we can apply filters to them.
Now you already do this when you're in your car driving using the radio, right? You turn up the bass or you turn up the treble. Effectively what you're doing is you're filtering part of this spectrum. The bass is the low frequencies, the treble is the high frequencies, and you can boost some of those up, you can pull other parts down, and we can actually do that with this simple program. I can do what's called a low pass filter. So what does that do? Low pass. It passes the low frequencies. So this is like only the bass frequencies are being let through. The higher frequencies are being completely destroyed. A different kind of filter would be a high pass filter. Right? The higher frequencies are let through, the bass R ones are turned off. What we'll learn about later is that our anatomy in many ways can act like a frequency filter which lets through only certain sounds and that that's how our how our bodies actually produce these amazing complex sounds